Have you been marketed to like this about paint? Our paint has the highest pigment loads available. First of all, I just want to say this. There is really no such thing as a student grade pigment, okay? I might have mentioned that previously, in the, but we've done like 10,000 videos now, so I mean, the chances of you or I remembering is very minimal. Uh, there is no such thing as a student grade pigment, okay? There, are the there is the amount of pigment that they put into a paint, the amount of milling time that's put into crush those pigments down, but really when it comes to quality, regardless of whether you're using a student grade or artist grade, it's going to be the same pigments. Now, having said that, sometimes they will omit certain really expensive pigment colors like cobalts or cadmiums uh, from a student grade line, and they might have something like a, a hue color, which we talked about uh, in previous FAAQs. But when it comes to the pigment loads, there's a few things that I need you to know. Because everything comes at a cost, and at the end of the day, the more pigment in your paint, the better, right? Or is that crap? Uh, you're, you're, you don't know. I don't know. You have no idea. Why are you nodding yes? I'm t this is, that's the intrigue. That's the hook. I'm trying to hook these people. Okay, people. All right, folks. Artists, friends, family, countrymen, lend me your ear. And we are going to talk about pigment loads today, okay? First of all, I want you to know something about certain types of paints. Because depending on the type of paint you're using, pigment loads might not matter as much. There is a maximum pigment load, an actual, like, this is as much as you can put in for acrylics. So if you ever read that an acrylic company says, we have the most pigment of any paint manufacturer, that is a lie. There is only so much pigment you can put into an acrylic because of the acrylic polymer, because of how it's made. Now, that, mean, that doesn't mean that they could put in less. You know, that, that's a difference where you can have less pigment that's not quite as strong or pigmented. But there is a maximum pigment load. Unlike watercolor and oil, where you can load that stuff up with pigment, and uh, you know, and that's got to be a great thing, right? Well, there are some pluses. You know, a highly pigmented paint, you might not have to use as much. You know, it has a lot of pigment in it, so it will have that good covering power. It will also have the ability to be uh, mixed with smaller amounts into lesser uh, quality paints. But let me just kind of show you some things, okay? I'm going to show you a few different paints here. I've got just a, this is just a Winsor Newton um, oil colors, okay? I'm going to grab a, let's see, I feel like, I feel like French ultramarine because I feel fancy, okay? These are beautifully pigmented paints, okay? Is this the maximum pigment load available? No. Like I said, there is no maximum. You could literally take this, fill it with 99.9% .9 pigment and just a drop of oil and call it paint. It's not going to be great, but it is technically, that's a, that, that would be, I guess, close to that maximum pigment load outside of just a jar of pigments. Now, a company like Old Holland, this is like a $17,000 tube of paint, they are known for having some of the highest pigment loads, okay? Now, when you work with something like Old Holland, you're going to see, just as I squeeze this out, it is stiff, okay? Because of that high pigment load, it changes the body of the paint. All right, so it's still, you know, great. It, it, it's still great paint, but because of that very high pigment load, it's stiff, okay? So you should expect, depending on that, that pigment load in your oil paint, that the body might not be as smooth and creamy as it might be um, if, if it was not quite as strongly pigmented because there's a lot of pigment. That's a lot of stuff that you're trying to pull through, okay? You know, when you're using these high pigmented paints, you're going to find that again that they're going to uh, you know you, you can use less you know less is more you can use less to make a, a mix they are, are higher in tinting strength they're higher in their ability to cover and be mixed you'll also find that they can produce a brilliant luminous uh, sheen and um, just know that you know they might change the way that they they work now just to kind of show you some of this I'm going to just kind of mix a little bit of white in here so you can get an idea and this is kind of similar to what we did when we talked about tinting strength but here these are both these are both the same these are both ultramarine uh, with uh, white and going back to our artist science standards here we're just playing around with paint um, I'll take a, a little bit of this um, ultramarine blue here Well, you need to do a better job of telling me what the sheen situation is. No, I meant like, is there tiger's blood in it? Oh. <laughs> no, no glare? No glare. 
Okay. All right. So now I'm going to do something as close as I can. I'm going to cut across now some of the um, old Holland. Okay. Now, again, this is a, a very highly pigmented paint. And you can see that you get a darker color, but you also see that I kind of got to work it a little bit more because it's a little stiffer. And that's fine. A lot of things when it comes to the, the body of your paint is preference. I mean, even acrylic paint, you can buy soft body, fluid, heavy body, extra heavy body, um, beautiful body, ugly body. I mean, whatever you want to, you know, body it up. Um, but that is part of the, the load, the pigment load, okay? That's some of the advantage and some of the cost is it will change the body. Now, if you don't have a maximum pigment load paint, are you using something subpar? Absolutely not. It's a lot about preference. Now, when you do see certain brands, they might want to say like, we have no fillers, okay? Where's the full load? No fillers in our paint. It's usually not a great idea for a paint to not have any fillers at all, okay? Fillers actually help stabilize your paints. So between your vehicle, so for oil paint, that might be linseed oil, safflower oil, um, it might be poppy oil, whatever it is, and the pigments, they usually want to add something else, usually maybe a little bit of wax, something that gives it that, that buttery consistency that stabilizes it so that it doesn't run everywhere because just linseed oil and paint ain't going to be a pleasant painting experience. Um, you want to have a little bit of filler. Now, those student quality paints might have a little bit too much filler, right? You know that. And that means that they're not going to be as strong and as powerful. So, you know, I can go here and take a, um, so this is a Winsor Newton Winton, all right? This is no knock against it. It's just, this is their, you know, student grade economy line. This is going to have the same pigment that goes into their artist grade, okay? So this is what I want you to kind of take home from this. There are two things going on here, okay? There is going to be, in most cases, a little bit less pigment than the artist grade and the student grade, but also the amount of time that the paint is milled, okay? The, the, the paint in, so you might read this in the copy, the triple roll milled paints, okay? If they mill it, I think that like Winton at one point was like milled twice through. Well, as I've said in previous FAAQs, some pigments require more milling than others, but to keep costs down, they limit the time that they're in the machines. So even though that this might have the exact same pigment load, which I don't even think it does, I think there's a little bit less, it won't necessarily have that same sheen and brilliance as the artist grade because it nece hasn't necessarily been milled as many times. So what you're paying for in an artist grade paint is not only a, a higher pigment load, but you're also paying for those pigments to be milled at the correct amount of time to maximize their luminosity and brilliance in the final product and the painting experience. I actually have a little story to tell uh, about um, the marketing of certain paints. Now, we talked a little bit about Old Holland and uh, this, this always kind of cracked me up. So Old Holland, um, they really wanted to push their, the fact that they had these, the maximum pigment loads. And they were selling, old, I'm talking about Old Holland oil colors, okay? Because remember, acrylics, there's only so much you can put in. That's just how acrylic polymer works. So they were saying, um, they had the maximum level of cadmiums because cadmiums, I mean, those are the expensive pigments. You know, those are something you want to show, look how much we put in. And they used to have on their sign, it would look like um, <laughs> they would have these two tubes of paint. And it would say like theirs. And then it would say, ours. You know, the, the artists need visual aids. You know, the, look, look, at, look at how much cadmium. Look at all that cadmium. Well, they eventually had to stop doing this because, you know, now you people are educated. You watch our videos. You know a little bit more than most people out there about these supplies because I share this vast uh, knowledge of useless information that I have about art supplies with you. Um, they were basically saying, we have the maximum level of dangerous materials in our paint because cadmiums are toxic, okay? Now, if you've watched our video on safety, you know that they're not really toxic if you use them correctly. You're not gonna die by holding this tube up, um, uh, you know, unless, you know, something bad happens to you while you're doing it, you know, but it won't be because of the tube. Because people don't really under, didn't really understand that, they actually removed this from their signage. They were like, well, we're advertising, we've got a lot of toxic stuff in our paint. Um, they still do have the maximum pigment load, and I want you to know that that is a, 
that it's fine. That is a good thing. That they, 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 their heart was in the right place, those nice Dutch people, when they did this. But this is no longer, this went the way of the dodo bird, as they say. No longer available. You won't see this anymore. I'm talking about Old Holland. I'm talking about suit and gray paint. I'm talking about Windsor Newton paint. I'm talking about all kinds of paints. Why are there so many different kinds of paints? Why is it? And this is, this is kind of wrapping things up for me. There are so many different kinds of paints out there. If, you know, you can buy artist quality paints at all different price points. Why do some people load it with pigment and others don't? A lot of it comes down to the philosophy of the paint maker. You know, each paint maker has had these recipes that they've kept for years that sometimes they've modified and adjusted depending on new science or new things that have been learned. But a lot of times it's the tradition of how the paint's been made. And I, I can't say this analogy enough, paint is very much like wine. A wine, uh, some people will swear by it, others will swear at it, same with paint. And the philosophy of how that wine is made, just like the paint, is something that you either buy into or you don't, you enjoy or you don't. Now you can take a brand like Lucas, and Lucas uses beeswax. Personally, I like it, but I know that my sister don't, okay? So this isn't, this isn't a gold scene endorsement necessarily, this is just split 50-50. I like it, it gives it a really buttery consistency and it dries evenly, but she doesn't care for it. She prefers, you know, other stuff. I think she likes Charbon and Old Holland. She, she doesn't pay for it. She uses the most expensive show she can find. Um, I love you, sweetie. Also, along with that, some manufacturers are trying to hit a certain price point. So they might understand, I, I'm not going to compete with Old Holland. Old Holland is going to be very expensive, okay? I want to compete against Windsor Newton. I want to compete against Da Vinci. I want to compete against Lucas. And they want to make their price point either on par or just below. Um, because that's what they're trying to target in terms of selling paint. That's another reason that some of these things fluctuate. And uh, along with things like I talked about the beeswax, that's going into filler, okay, some of the things that they put into add, uh, uh, and filler is not a four letter word, it's not. It, it can be overused in student grade paint, but artist grade paints, you want a little filler. Um, you can also talk about for things like watercolor and oils, uh, the vehicle. So like, you know, in oils, you know, whether they use linseed oil or they use walnut oil or safflower oil or poppy oil, that all goes into philosophy, all can change price points, all can change how it works. Uh, with watercolor, you know, some of you guys have asked me about watercolors with honey, watercolors with gum arabic. It's just the philosophy of the paint maker uh, that what uh, how they want their paint to behave, how they want it to feel when you use it. And for oil paint, they mostly want you to have that kind of buttery consistency. And if you're using a paint that is very, very highly pigmented, it might have that buttery consistency, but it'll be a little bit like, I don't know, like I call it like the cheap restaurant butter, where it's like they, they didn't take the time to get the room temperature nice and creamy. You know, it's a little bit stiffer. I like those restaurants where you, you take that little knife, you know, the little butter knife, and you just, oh, it goes right in. Uh, that's how that creamy, that's what I get with Lucas. That's why I like it. That's right, there's wax. So those are all the things that go into the loads and quality of different paints, okay? These are some of the behind the scenes points I wanna make that you understand uh, when you're looking at all these different paints and all the different things that they do and all the different prices that they are, why that is. So it's important that when you are experimenting, you find your philosophy on what kind of paint you like. Uh, it's just as important as you find that philosophy on the type of artist you wanna be. And it's just as important as you find your philosophy on me on Instagram at Mike Not Jerry. Join me there, we're having a good time. And you're missing out, if you're not on there, oh, I can't believe how much you're missing out on. If you have any questions regarding pigments, pigment loads, pigment quality, uh, put them below. Uh, I might answer you below, I might do another video in the future. Um, uh, I might do another Just a Tip, which uh, are exclusive Instagram videos, which you shouldn't be missing out on. And if you're one of those people that just watch our FAAQs and don't watch our artist problems, I'm really surprised. I mean, right? Okay, let me, let me just look at this. Okay, sometimes my abbreviations, so instead of writing student grade, I wrote stud grade, <laughs> and I'm like, stud grade? Like, yeah, it's a good looking pigment.